All right, guys, let's cut the chit chatter. Uh, Jar's got a uh, video for us. 2018 cruise okay. video is now finished, uh, but it's kind of morphed into an SOP refresher video. <laughs> Screw this, guys, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Bosco. I had Kirka lock the door when we walked in. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, kick back, relax. Um, here's uh, 15 minutes of your life you'll never get back. seven nautical miles from the carrier before climbing to our assigned altitude to join up with our flight. Do not attempt to join up with any other aircraft before you enter the stack overhead mother. Select TACAN on the upfront controller and turn it on. Select 74, then hit enter. Now bring up your HSI. Change the scale to 10 and box the TACAN. Hold the course switch until you see Cecil on the UFC. Then type in the carrier's base recovery course, or BRC, then hit enter. Now we have the range to the carrier in the HUD. Once we reach seven nautical miles on the TACAN, we're good to climb to our stack altitude and make a left turn to enter the stack. The stack is the carrier controlled zone above the aircraft carrier. Stack altitudes are Below 300 feet is reserved for helicopter operations. 500 feet is for departing aircraft. 600 feet is the carrier landing and missed approach pattern. 800 feet is for the overhead brake. 1200 feet is for aircraft entering the spin due to excess traffic in the landing pattern. 2000 feet is the assigned stack altitude for showtime flight. 3000 is hammer. 4000 is vicious and 5000 is reserved for shakedown. We use the US Navy port holding pattern to define the overhead stack for joiner. The overhead stack can be thought of as a circle passing over the carrier with left hand traffic flow. Directly overhead the carrier is point one. Point three is 180 degrees of turn from point one and it's where you would depart the stack to commence a landing approach. Climb to your assigned altitude and fly the reciprocal BRC heading roughly 3.5 miles a beam off the course line. This will pass you outside of the USS Vincennes, which marks position three and is the entry point for the overhead stack. Roll to a left 30 degree angle of bank, maintaining 250 knots and your assigned altitude. We highly recommend flight leads to utilize barometric altitude hold and auto throttle control when orbiting the stack. Standards are plus or minus 100 feet of altitude and plus or minus five knots of airspeed. Once visual your flight lead, you may cut across the circle and head for the post to establish yourself on lead's bearing line. You must remain at your assigned altitude throughout the join to ensure safe separation from other formations in the stack above and below you. Always adhere to the ABCs of joins, altitude, bearing line, closure. For altitude, your flight lead should appear near the horizon line. Proper bearing line is the vertical stab bisecting the opposite wing. You should arrive on bearing line, co-altitude and near co-airspeed of 250 knots. Continue to fine tune your bearing line and closure until you arrive in parade. Wingtip on the flight lead's head with nozzles in line. Once stabilized in parade, complete the join by crossing under to the outside.
If you are leading a division, dash three and dash four should form up as a fingertip left. Hammer flight, go fluid four. Hammer flight, engaging four ship, make 29s. Zero one four for 70 at 20,000. Got him yet? Yeah. Three zero sevens engaging. Bulls three five four for 120. Once on course for target, the flight will increase to the contract airspeed of 350 knots and should separate out to fluid four. If it's a flight of two, then dash one and dash two go tack form. To maintain this tack form or fluid four spacing during heading changes, all aircraft perform the turns by going max afterburner and pulling enough G to maintain 350 knots. If a 90 degree heading change is required, we perform a tack turn. The outside aircraft starts a 90 degree turn towards the wingman. The inside aircraft delays its turn until the outside aircraft's nose is pointed directly at him and he can see the intakes. The inside aircraft now starts his turn. Both aircraft should roll out on heading still in tack form, but they will have swapped sides. It is a responsibility of the wingman to adjust his position to fix the formation if required. For 180 degree heading changes, we use in-place turns. Both aircraft go max afterburner and pull G to maintain 350 knots until on the new heading. Reform to left echelon for the tanker join. Fly bearing line for the KC-130 by ensuring there's a gap between the tail and the right wing. Just like for joining a Hornet, the tanker should be behind your right canopy mirror as you approach. This enables the KC-130 crew to keep track of who they have in formation with them. Stabilise in port observation by placing the prop spinner on the outboard engine just behind the numbers on the fuselage. Safe bearing line approaches are important during the mission when there's a queue for the tanker. Port observation establishes order for requesting fuel from the tanker. You should not make radio contact with tanker unless you are at port observation and the closest aircraft to the tanker. You can request refueling when a hose becomes free. Head to pre-contact by descending and sliding sideways beneath the tanker and receivers to the refuel area. Pre-contact is behind the hose roughly where maximum drogue extension should be. Aircraft that have received fuel cross under to the reform area to join up and head off as a flight. Being efficient and safe at bearing line CV rendezvous and getting gas are both highly valued skills in the Stingers. Aircraft returning to the overhead stack shall be established on assigned altitude by 10 nautical miles from the carrier. Once your flight has returned to the stack overhead mother, you must find the correct interval for case one recovery. You are at the correct interval when you have 90 degrees of turn for every aircraft in the formation ahead of you. If there is only one aircraft ahead of you, strive to be 90 degrees behind them on the overhead stack pattern. You should be cross circle or 180 degrees behind a section. You should be 270 degrees behind a light division of three aircraft. If you are behind a division, you should be directly above them in the overhead stack for a full 360 degree interval. It is your turn to commence the next time you hit point three after the flight in front of you has commenced. From point three, Begin to descend to an initial at 800 feet and accelerate to 350 knots. At no point should you be more than 5.2 nautical miles from the TACAM. Utilize a 20 second break interval between members of the same flight. If you arrive overhead the ship and there are still aircraft in the pattern, you should enter the spin pattern. Maintain 350 knots, climb to 1200 feet and fly a 45 degree angle of bank turn to stay within three nautical miles of the ship. 
If you are approaching point three and you hear or see someone executing the spin pattern, do not commence. Take another lap in the overhead stack and commence next time. You're in the stingers. When you enter the brake, you need to bring the heat every single time. This means flying a steady initial to the overhead so your wingman can be uptight in parade, looking supreme. It also means sending the shit hot at the back of the ship. In this example, we can see the top of the aircraft as it breaks. This is wrong. So very, very wrong. His poor wingman is checking his fuel gauge to see if he needs to tank for the extended downwind he's going to have to do. We should never see the top of your jet in the brake. You should look like this. Good. Don't settle. Little overshooting start. Little settling close. Fair to eye.